Egyptian paste. I pulled these out of the cabinet in the slip casting room. There's a lot of little press molds back there like this. By the way, when you add little tiny things like this on top of a surface, it's called sprigging. This one with berries and tiny bugs, all kinds of fun stuff. So the two problems I think you're going to encounter with this are not joining well enough and drying too fast. So definitely dry slowly. We've got a few work on it this weekend. You've got a couple weeks. The stuff is not particularly plastic. You can see it's already crazing along the surface. And Mitzi did report that she had better results from working on a non-plaster mold to the plaster mold. I'm, I actually did tell you that. No, Mitzi said it would be better the other day for us to use one of the plaster molds. That's not what she told me. Well, you were there, you heard it. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not going to say I did, because I really can't remember. <laughs> so, well, we'll find out. So this is all the same color. So I can kind of blend things together. Did you guys do that at all when you were working? Or did you just lay stuff on top of each other? Um, and press. You yeah. did it actually blend? Mm -hmm. yeah. Blended it, smashed it all together, and then we kind of got a sponge and went back and huh. kind of forced it together. And yeah, I did How wet was the sponge? Not too terribly wet. And I sprayed it and compressed and then, it with my fingers. Too. And then we, Mitzi showed us how to do the edges to look nice. Because let's go back with the pen tool and even it all off. Mm -hmm. So this stuff is like extra sticky clay. <laughs> I just how it's sticking to my fingers. This is the Egyptian stuff? This is Egyptian paste, yeah. Okay. So the two colors that I made <laughs> look kind of identical, but this is going to fire dark blue and the other one's going to fire white. That can be confusing. I swear she told me the one she did in the plastic bowl turned out better. Yeah, she says you're going to use like a plastic or something else to put saran wrap down in it first. But if it's plastic, plaster, it should release itself. So a theory that I developed, and we'll see if it's true. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest with you, I haven't done Egyptian paste for years. Is wetting the surface when you're joining the two? Did you guys do that at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very um, compressed. Um. Well, it was hard for us to because we had <laughs> all different colors, so to keep right. them from blending. Right. That is yeah. going to be the trick. So we did all that and we went over with the sponge. And the advantages of this is you would only have to fire it once. That is an advantage. Another advantage is that it just has its own look. If you like the look, you say it looks like taffy, so yeah. <laughs> then I wouldn't do it. <laughs> so these are the little things that I made out of those press molds. I think it would make nice beans. <coughs> Yes, that is what most people do with it, is make beads. Yeah. And if you want to use the extra stuff you have to make beads, go for it. So these press molds, that's all 
there is to it. I'm guessing it wasn't working that way for you. Well, when we pull the stuff out, I guess it's because we worked with it so much, it was just kind of already falling apart. Aha. Uh -huh. It's like we have dried out Play Doh. Gotcha. Yeah, you definitely have to keep it sticky. The Christmas tree worked well. It looks all right. The one thing I was finding slightly annoying when I did these was that it kind of tears along the edges when you cut it, even with a fettling knife. So you kind of have to go back and fuss with the edges. And it's probably better not to do that circle. <laughs> A significant amount of time before you go to use it. I'm not going to make anything very nice out of this because I'm not liking what I'm doing here. But here I think you get they're really nice. That could be nice. I might save that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my recommendation is. Cover it as soon as you're done with it. Handle it as little as possible as soon as you're done making it. Make it all in one sitting. So don't start this and then come back to it. Finish it all in one sitting. What about when it comes out? Can you work with it at all once it pops out of the mold? I wouldn't. Okay. I don't think that it's something that you can handle after it comes out of the mold. Mitzi said once it popped out, if it was still moist, so I guess try to go on the underside and warm it together, if you had seen. So if you use the plaster mold, you could do that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now something else that you could do, rather than what I just did with the coils to make your pattern, you could lay down one solid color and then build a pattern on top of it. That would probably minimize cracking risk as well. to do like a thin layer down You can first. carve into it also, right? Yeah, you probably can. Um, this has been sitting here for a while. It just kind of does that tear. Or I mean, when it's still wet, you can like make, draw a pattern in it. Mm. Kind of a messy looking one. Because <laughs> I was going to use the needle tool, but just kind of press with it rather than like make yeah okay. that works okay my finger might be in like two seconds of this but other than that it's fine. so any of this extra egyptian paste here is up for grabs i wrote a green v on the blue one and the other one is white i know it should have been a blue b if you guys want to use these little things, you feel free to. Should you make one that cracks and you have to put it back together, how would you go about that? Um, depends on how dry it is when it cracks. If it's fairly dry, I would take it apart and reconstitute the stuff and do it again. If it's still kind of leather hardish, I would slowly, very slowly re-wet it and then maybe try to score and wet the edges. So if it's completely dry, you can re Just like turn it into a clay. Okay. Yeah. All clay and glaze can be reconstituted that way. Alright, so that was Egyptian paste. In the handouts I gave you guys, the technique I'm going to show you next is called Xerox transfer. And basically it uses the fact that photocopies and laser printouts have toner. And toner is melted plastic. So what's awesome about melted plastic is that it resists water. So you can see that I've already started to paint this. You can use underglaze to fill in, and if the underglaze is watery enough, and that's important, it will sort of roll off the toner. Notice I am not taking a big brush 
and going over the entire thing, it does not roll off that well. <laughs> you still have to be a little bit icky picky about it, but can you see how when I'm doing this, if I hit the toner, it kind of rolls back into the... white area. This technique only works with high contrast images. You can't get any gray tones. Really skinny lines don't work so well. And if you get yourself a really detailed image, it can take you a while to paint, which is part of why this demo took so long to carry, because I was painting in that guy and these guys. Now, if the underglaze is too sticky, you'll get that result, which is what happened the first underglaze I tried. Now, you can also do this with mason stains mixed with water. So those same mason stains you use to color your Egyptian paste can be mixed with water, and that works really well. Okay, I'm recording. Very mm, Brooklyn? Think heavy cream. But not yogurt, for sure. Okay. I love dairy analogies. <laughs> Anyone never had milk before in their life? Because I use a lot of dairy analogies. Seriously, anyone never had milk before? Okay. <laughs> you never know. With the stains, I've had better success with darker colors than lighter colors. It doesn't seem to matter as much with underglaze in terms of what will transfer. And in fact, if you put light underglaze on top of a dark background, it can look really good. This doesn't always work perfectly. So unless you're super precise about it, you're going to come up with an image that's slightly imperfect compared to the original, and that can be nice. Might make it feel a little bit more hand done, handmade. It's a good way of transferring text. Just keep in mind that you do the text backwards because if the text is forwards, it will be backwards on your piece. And it transfers the glaze, so it should be, right? The underglaze. The underglaze. So it'll transfer what's around it if you print out text. Um, toner, wouldn't it? If you print out text that the text is black, but if you reverse the values, you can get white text. So. Photoshop has a function called invert, and probably a lot of other image programs do too. <laughs> in fact, the old photocopier we had in here had an invert button, but they replaced the photocopier, so we don't have that anymore. Which is kind of sad. Any Xerox machine will do this? Yep, any Xerox machine, or laser printer for that matter. Anything that uses toner instead of ink. Inkjet prints won't do anything because what you're working on is the fact that toner is plastic. So the paper is absorbent and the toner isn't. And I'm going to do that guy first because once you've painted, you have to wait until the underglaze is no longer shiny. If you try to transfer it while the underglaze is still shiny, the image will squish out and look a big mess. So this piece, I don't know if you can see, but the on-gobe has just barely lost its shine. You need that stickiness in order to transfer. So this should be dry. However, don't leave it sitting around for a day or so. By the way, maybe at this time of year here in Savannah, it won't matter. If you let it sit for too long, the underglaze will start flaking off when you bend it. 
but if it's not dry. Smoothing it down in the middle. Hopefully, oh, this is still sticking enough. Okay. And I definitely recommend using something like a rib to smooth it down. being particularly impressed by the stickiness of it. I <laughs> have waited a couple minutes too long. Yeah, that's not working at all. Um, spray bottle. Okay. That works. First one I drew. <laughs> Just erased it. Oh, that was the plan. Because <laughs> oh. there's so much left on there that I'm hoping that it will transfer better this time. Mm. Now that I made it stickier. So that's another approach to making the surface sticky is just to spray it in. Rub your fingers across. Would you, is that the same thing you just did with that one? Like, you just filled in the, the lines with? Yes. Face? Okay. Yeah. I just didn't think that you guys wanted to sit through my doing all that. <laughs> Could get a little tedious to watch. And if you put down on gober underglaze first and you mess it up when you're doing this, you can always go back and patch it after you're done. It's generally a good idea to let this sit, and it should stick that well. If it's not sticking that well, it's not going to work. Your best bet when doing this is to start with a piece that's leather hard, not, not quite leather hard. Put the underglaze on, let it dry for about 10 seconds, and then put this stuff. Trying to decide whether I'm willing to deal with the amount of squish that's going to happen with how much shine there's left on there. All right, I'm not ready to deal with that, so I'm going to move on to the next technique <laughs> and start talking about that. This is another way of using Xerox copies. This will do gray tones, so things this fine will transfer. You can see their fabric patterns. Anyone ever taken a printmaking class before? Why not? Not much. Okay. This is a type of lithography, and I actually learned this technique first as an alternative method printmaking technique for paper. This is stand oil. Utrecht has the best stand oil I've found. The reason being that you want this oil to be super thick. And what you do is you mix your stand oil with ceramic pigment, so mason stain or oxide. And you'd probably like me to have a precise formula for this, but I don't. It's, I eyeball equal volumes. So 
when it looks like an equal volume of pigment to stand oil. There's a video of someone doing this that I linked to the Blackboard page, and she makes this work ever so slightly differently than I do. Hers looks a little bit thinner than mine. They both work. Um, she mixes it in a jar, and I've found that if I mix it in a jar, it gets too hard. So I only do a, what I need for that particular print time. So then you just start mixing it together. It looks like it's not going to work at first. If you've ever done block printing, which is linoleum block printing, you want it to be a similar texture to linoleum block ink. So the same as wood block printing? Yes, same as wood block printing. More people have done linoleum block than wood block, so I usually say linoleum block. It does take a little while to mix up the ink. If you guys want to try this, I'm going to keep the extra ink and my supplies here so you can just use this because I'm only going to use a very small portion of this ink to do this. Shoot. That's what I forgot to bring. What are you mixing it on? Just a, a piece of glass. Okay. What I forgot to bring was another piece of glass <laughs> to do the gum arabic on. Does anyone have like a wide plastic lid or something that I could borrow? Like a bin lid? Come on, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> I usually use a sheet of plexiglass, but of course I forgot that. So you can see that I actually could incorporate all that powder into the oil even though it looked like it wasn't going to work. Just try and see. Better than nothing. <laughs> How gracious are you? <laughs> it's got texture to it, so I'm not sure what that's going to do. Uh, but. What's your bag of one that does it? Uh, I don't think so. I think that's as good as it gets. Okay, we'll make it work. Sorry. We will make it work. Alright. Whatever I do this on is going to require a fair amount of cleaning. I don't want to mess up somebody's stuff. Alright, let's go back to this. This is ready. This is going to be a jumping all over the place today. <laughs> Hopefully. This guy's will be too. Who's cooking? Decided I needed to re-wet this because it had already gotten less sticky. I want to the, the first one. What was that that you did? That the dark one. That, that? it was just brown underglaze. Okay. And this was green and pink underglaze. The reason I wanted to get this second one on here is I wanted to show you that you can also combine this technique with stenciling. Which is why I cut that in half on that angle. The other thing I like about doing that is that when I'm using the rubber rib, I don't have to worry about what a mess I'm making of the surface there. Because I can just go ahead and cover that up. If 
it doesn't stick down perfectly, just approach it from this angle. about this is that you can peek and if it didn't work you can push it back down again but it seems to be working pretty much so I don't like how that transferred I can add a little bit of water in there stick it back down again as long as you don't peel it all the way off it will stay registered So, it's not a perfect transfer, but it worked pretty well. It's pretty cool. We going to let this other one sit for a couple more minutes and see if that helps. Honey, how did you draw this on there? Just with a pencil? That's a photocopy. Oh, okay. It was originally done in pen. Okay. It was black drawing on a white background. And then I scanned it into the computer and inverted it so that it became a white drawing on a black background. You could just do a drawing in white on a black paper and photocopy it as well. <laughs> if you want to. Would somebody be willing to do me a favor and go grab the cylinder that's in front of the fan? It's got I think it's pink and white. So I'm going to start rolling out the ink because it's the first step. You want to get a nice even coat. That sound that it's making, you want to hear that sound and you want it to have a fine texture. So if it's got a, a big texture, the ink is too thick. You're going to have too much on your brayer. This is called a brayer, by the way. <laughs> and at this point, I'm going to put gloves on because it takes a while to get the ink off your fingers and it's oil-based ink. And you can get it off really easy with baby oil, but I hate the smell of baby oil, so... <laughs> so I prefer not to get it on my fingers. Awesome, thank you. So this is another technique that gets transferred onto leather hard clay, and this is pretty good right now. And what makes this work is that I'm going to saturate the paper with water. Water and oil don't mix. Therefore, the ink will only stick to where the toner is because it will be less saturated there. The other key ingredient to this is gum arabic. So I was introduced to this technique as gum arabic transfers. I've also seen it called photolithography. So to start off, I am going to pour down a little bit of gum arabic and spread it around and stick my image face up in the gum arabic and take the extra gum arabic and work it across the surface. The paper is all coated in gum air. We need to get all the gum Arabic out from around the image because unfortunately that interferes with the ink, <laughs> which is kind of irritating. Too much 
much coming out of it. I will warn you that this technique takes a little bit of practice. So don't be disappointed if the very first one you do doesn't come out perfectly. My first one looked kind of bad. <laughs> I have two bowls of water because I'm going to use one for clean stuff and the other one to clean the ink off. You kind of need two bowls of water. Okay. And then you just roll out the ink. I chose black because it transfers very well, but it's a little annoying because you can't tell what's sticking to the toner as well. If it's a different color from the toner, it's easier to tell that it's sticking properly. And this I am rolling in only one direction at a time. I'm not going back and forth. If you go back and forth, your paper will get wrapped around your bear, and that's really irritating. Right, so, you do that, and then And you can see very clearly that the ink is sticking to the toner right here, but not as much in some other places. So I'm going to go back and do it again. You can do this up to three times without destroying the paper. After that, the paper is just going to fall apart. And I had the thought once that, ooh, I could make the paper thicker and that would work better. No, it doesn't. Because um, then it won't, con it doesn't stay together any better and it doesn't conform to the surface as well. <laughs> it falls apart just as easily as the thinner paper. This is decaf, so simple. but you can get lots of colors this way. Any color you think of, and all you need is a photocopier. Can you see that the ink is now coating that better? Yeah. I think I might give it one more pass just to be sure. When you mix the mason stains with the oil, will it turn the color that it's going to be? Yes. For the most part, I mean, mason stain sometimes intensifies in the kiln. But more so than with the Egyptian paste, right? Maybe? No? Uh, yes, because what's happening with Egyptian paste is that the paste is making everything look more pastel than okay. it will be when it's done. Whereas there you're just mixing it with oil. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said this isn't going to happen. It's just too much trouble. <laughs> This is what that paper town lady does? No. No? No. How often do you do this? I used to do it a lot. I haven't done it for a year. Just because it doesn't apply to the work I'm doing right now. How long did you say it took you to get proficient at it? Two or three tries. And I didn't have a demonstration or a video to watch. I figured out how to do it on my own. So. <laughs> <laughs> By reading things? Yes. Yeah. I saw it in that print on clay book and thought, that looks cool. And then I did it. So, I'm not going to be able to reveal this before class is over, unfortunately. Because well, class is over in five minutes, and you got to wait until the paper turns white again before you can peel it off, or it won't work. So I might just stay after class and do the rest of these ones that I did. I'll leave my stuff here, so if you, next class you guys want to play with this, you can.
screen transfer good with me. And then if you get like sloppy edges like that, So I'll revile that to you guys next class or maybe peel it off.